Hello everyone and welcome back to Talk of Him Conference Talks. Thanks for joining us. We hope you're enjoying these weekly installments of brief episodes where we just share a quick insight about a general conference talk that inspires you to go and see what this talk says to you. And in the theme of Talk of Him, we've never tried to provide all the context and all right. the scriptures. We really value having spirit-directed conversations. The difference is we have not prepped at all. So we don't yeah. know. This is just like you call your friend. What did you think of this talk? Well, we, we've prepped personally, privately. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But we haven't talked until now. I haven't even heard the talk. <laughs> <No>. We, <didn't> even, <laughs> we don't even we know what the know talk this. is about. No, we, we know what the yeah, talk yeah. is about, but we don't know what each other is yeah. going to say. And usually during conference weekend, I like to text John. And this last conference weekend, I just stayed away. Yeah. I was like, we're not going to, mm. we're not. So we don't know what's going to be shared today. And and if you want to have a great resource to help you, Siegel Book and Deseret Book available now is the General Conference Addresses Journal Edition. So all the talks are there, but there's journal space yeah. so that you can have your own talk of him interpretation yeah. and those insights. Because I've learned that like each time I hear a talk yeah. and then I revisit it, I hear something new, I get a new application, yeah. there's something else in my life happening. So, Every talk says something different. To yeah, my, to, living to, scripture, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, today's talk that we're going to consider uh, comes to us by President Camille N. Johnson, uh, the General Relief Society president. She gave a talk called Jesus Christ is Relief. And the part that stood out to me, and again, this might be the same one as Gainaline. I love going first because then <laughs> I can... <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen. Um, she says this, each of us is carrying a metaphorical backpack. It may be a basket balanced on our head or a satchel or a bundle of things wrapped in cloth and thrown over your shoulder. But for our thinking, let's just call it a backpack. This metaphorical backpack is where we carry the burdens of living in a fallen world. Our burdens are like rocks in the backpack. Generally, there are three kinds. And I just love how this is a common thing that I hear being taught more and more, sort of three different sources of life's mm -hmm. stresses or uh, difficulties. She says, rocks are sometimes there because of our own doing because of sin, poor choices. Two, rocks in our backpack come because of poor decisions, misconduct, and unkindness of others. And then three, she says, the rocks we carry sometimes are just there because of us living in a fallen world. It's just life. And then she says this, I joyfully declare there are, that our mortal burdens, these rocks in our figurative backpack, need not feel heavy because Jesus Christ can help lighten our load. And so what this reminded me of is a story okay. that my son Enoch experienced on a long backpacking trip in the Uintas. Oh, okay. A long, uh, that was back when he was in high school and he's- Not metaphorical. No, a real, a real backpack, backpack. But we had all of our young men and we were going way out in the middle of nowhere because of our friend uh, who was in the leadership with me, young men leadership. His name is Mike McMurtry. Mike is crazy. Everyone knows that. <laughs> and so he took us way out to the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and with these kids, some were prepared. Some kids just, you know, don't do outdoors. But we were going up into the mountains for a long time. And so my son was part of this group. And there was a, a, a smaller kid in the group whose backpack was literally as big as him. <laughs> and it became very clear very quickly that he is not going to make it to where we're going. He's not. And turning back really isn't an option because we're so far out. Well, this is where my son has this, this idea. And he went over to him, he says, so I'm reading some of this is going to be my son Enoch's words. I went over to him and I said, I would take his backpack and I'll strap it over mine. So Enoch was a senior, so he was an older kid at this point. He has on two backpacks and we're up in rugged country. And he said at first, he's like, yeah, this is the right thing to do. He said within, it didn't take long before he was just resentful and angry because this little kid is just like, wee, <laughs> running around, jumping off of rocks. and Capri himself. Sons. Yes. And he gets this, dying. And then he had a sacred, sacred moment with this backpack of weight. And I want, this becomes a metaphor. <clears throat> he said, around that moment when I felt like I was just going to give up, I said a prayer and I asked for help. I said, I can't climb this hill on my own. My backpack is too heavy. In that moment, I heard a voice say something like, now you have a sliver of what he went through for you. And he said, after I heard that, I just started weeping silently to myself because I was by myself. And that gave me the 
energy and the power and the strength I needed to make it back to camp. And I made it barely to the camping spot. And I just uh, remember that, that sacred moment and I, how this backpack, this metaphorical backpack we carry was very real for him, but it was that real experience mm -hmm. that led up to a very sacred experience, understanding the principle that President Johnson teaches that Christ lightens our loads, takes our loads from us so we can be the happy-go-lucky kid on the trail jumping around and drinking Capri Suns. <laughs> right? yeah. Well, I, I too love that that part of the talk, and I love that she talks about how he lightens, lifts, and provides relief, yeah. right? The weight of the sin is, is there, yeah. but because of Christ and the atonement, and I will say, just like fully transparent, as you go through this talk, she talks about why we are so stingy with our rocks. Like yeah. she gives the analogy of yeah. the baseball pitcher who love it. Re refuses to leave the relief pitch, when yeah, the when relief there's pitcher relief available. Yeah. yeah, and I think about what if that young boy wasn't going to let Enoch help him, and yeah. how often we don't. She goes on to talk about like why are we so stingy? Mm -hmm. Why don't we let the Savior? Why do we insist on carrying the rocks alone? And, and she says, brothers and sisters, I can't go at it alone. I don't need to, and I won't. Choosing to be bound to my Savior, Jesus Christ, through the covenants I have made with Him, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And I just think, how often do I, like, metaphorically, but literally decide, no, I've got this, I've got this. Yeah. And what stops me from, like, really accessing the atonement or fully. After conference, I had a conversation with a friend about some of the shared burdens. We are having a similar experience. Mm. And she shared with me how she's literally trying to take those rocks out mm. and hand them to the Savior through her meditation and prayer. Like it sounds beautiful, right? But it's 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 a difficult process right. and very, very personal for right. each of us. And I think for me, this talk was just another reminder of Am I literally going through the process mm. on a daily basis? Like when the prophet's saying joyfully repent daily, right. she goes through and talks about covenant keepers and repentance is one of the ways and the two ways that she suggests to take those burdens and mm. hand them over. But I kind of need to sometimes know the how. And yeah. so this friend of mine sat with me and talked with me about how she kind of visualizes those burdens and those rocks and taking them out of the backpack and giving them. For her, it's different. She visualizes it in a little bit of a different way. But I've been trying to practice it since General Conference more specifically because some of these burdens are maybe obvious. Yeah. Um, but I think oftentimes the burdens for me that can weigh the backpack down are ones that maybe are so personal that the average person would be like, well, of course you're going through a cancer diagnosis and that's hard, or you're going through a divorce and that's hard, or, or you're, you just went through an unemployment, that's hard. Yeah. But I'm trying to really practice uh, re receiving more mm. the uh, power of the atonement in my life yeah. instead of just trying to always insist on doing it on my own. And accessing the atonement in very specific ways, I would love for our audience to share in the comments yeah. how they're literally doing yeah, that. Yeah, that would be awesome. Like instead of just we talk about receive right. the atonement, yoke yourself with Christ. Sister Johnson talks about the yoking as well, right? Yeah. How do you really do that? How do you access the atonement in your life? One way that I've been trying to do is literally visualize through meditation, handing those burdens over, visualizing yeah. the Savior taking them from yeah. me each day and not just like, like, acquiring rock after rock yeah. after by the end of the week you're like why is it so heavy and i think the atonement is obvious during the sacrament right we're sitting there partaking of the sacrament yeah. we see it as a covenant we see that that emblems reminding us to yoke ourselves but the prophet's saying do this daily joyfully repent daily turn over the rocks daily yeah. don't try to carry them but what does that really look like so i love it i love that focus as maybe our main invitation for our audience to share with us yeah. specifically in the comments is the how. Right. And for us, especially on these conference talks, I feel like we're showing you in a lifetime that there can be just one part or there can be an interpretation that reminds you of something else that you've experienced that brings it back to your memory. And then you share it with someone and it helps them. I hope that we can see in your comments and your feedback how this conference talk has resonated with you and how you really are seeking the Savior and more relief in your life on a daily basis. And we'll see you again next week on Talk of Him.
Talk of Him is brought to you by Covenant Communications. Make sure you follow us on social media and pick up a copy of Find Him Study Guide at Siegel Book or online. 